risen Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Butchell Park Baptist Church. My name is Erica Whitaker and I'm the senior pastor here. Thank you for joining us for worship today. Today we are in the season of Easter Tide, which means that we continue to celebrate our risen Lord Jesus Christ. We continue to proclaim the good news of hope and love that Jesus brought down to earth. I pray that you have found peace this past week and that you find peace in the following days ahead. In this strange season, we can often become depressed as we are isolated in our homes, trying to keep social distance from one another. But just because we are not physically together does not mean we cannot unite our spirits together. And this is what we do in worship. We unite our spirits as one body of Christ. So as you worship today, we, we hope that you find peace and encouragement. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. Please join us for a call to worship based on Psalm 30. You have turned our mourning into dancing. You have taken away our funeral clothes and reclothed us in joy, so that our whole being, body, mind, and soul, might sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, our Lord, we will give thanks to you forever. Please join us for a hymn of praise, hymn number 306, Come Christians Join to Sing. Testament reading from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held by its power. For, for David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, 
I might say, may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that, of us are witnesses. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I invite you to join me in prayer. God of peace and love, the good news of Jesus' resurrection has been revealed to us. Mary proclaimed, I have seen the Lord, and Thomas declared, my Lord and my God. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. Show us how to bring peace to the world, just as you offered peace, as you revealed yourself to the disciples, hiding behind locked doors, unsure of what was to come. Break through our doors too, O God, doors of loneliness and isolation, doors of depression, anxiety, and fear, doors of injustice, doors that we put up for ourselves and those that have locked us in, doors that are newly built and doors that have been secured for generations. Break down all these doors that hold us in and free us to not just know, but to experience for ourselves the good news that you embody. For in you, our hope is alive. You show us the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. So our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest secure. Even as we worship from our homes and look forward to the day when we can come together in one place again, we know that you are with us. And we cling to your words, peace, be with you and we join you in sharing peace with all the world. Amen. Good morning, Beecher Park. Please join me in the communal prayer. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We pray that whenever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace to the glory of your name. Amen. Remember that we serve a generous God who continues to love out of abundance. I ask during this time that you consider giving to Butcher Park Baptist Church. I know many of you have been so faithful in your tithes and offerings. Please continue to do so. If you are interested in giving a little bit extra, now is a great time to do that because we are reaching out to our neighbors, helping them with food, with benevolence, and we ask that you continue to give to give graciously, remembering that we do serve a generous God. surprises, at least good surprises. 
Maybe surprises like birthday presents or visits from special family members. You know, Jesus was pretty good at surprises. After he surprised the women at the tomb by being alive again, he kept surprising people who didn't yet know that he was alive or that hadn't been able to see him for themselves. After Mary was surprised by Jesus outside the tomb, she ran to tell the disciples. And that night, Jesus came through a locked door. Yes, a locked door. Now he didn't say surprise, but he did say, peace be with you. And then he showed them his hands and his side where he had been hurt so that they would know that it was really him. But Thomas, who was one of the disciples, he wasn't there that day. And he didn't get to see Jesus. Have you ever missed out on something really exciting? I have and I didn't like it very much. Thomas had missed out. He wanted to see Jesus too. So he even said he wouldn't believe unless he saw and touched Jesus. The next week, Jesus appeared to them again, and this time Thomas was there too. And Jesus said again, peace be with you. And then he showed Thomas his hands and his side. But Thomas immediately said, my Lord and my God. He knew that it was really Jesus. And he was so happy to see this wonderful surprise for himself. You know, not everybody got to see Jesus alive again right away. Not everybody got to see Jesus alive again at all. Some of them, like us, have to trust the people who were surprised, the people who did get to see Jesus. Now I wonder today, I wonder what it felt like to be in that locked room, not knowing what was going to happen. I wonder how the disciples felt when Jesus surprised them by coming through a locked door. I wonder how Thomas felt when he discovered he had missed out on seeing Jesus and then when he got to see him for himself. I hope you will wonder about this story today. And our kids and our youth are invited to wonder with me later on our virtual Zoom calls. It may not be on the mountain high or over the stormy sea. It may not be at the battle's front. My Lord will have need of me. But if by the still small voice he calls to paths that I do not know, I'll answer, dear Lord, with my hand in thine. I'll go where you want me to go. Perhaps today there are loving words which Jesus would have me speak. There may be now in the paths of sin some wonder whom I should seek. Oh, Savior, if thou wilt speak, my guide, though dark and rugged, What 
you want me to say, dear Lord, I'll be what you want me to be. There's surely somewhere a lonely place in earth's harvest field so wide, where I may labor through life's short day for Jesus the crucified. So trusting my all to thy tender care. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 20. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. A wise man once said, the wound is the place where the light enters you. Hmm. The light of life can only penetrate our beings through our wounds. However, we live in a world that views wounds as weakness. We are told to hide our pain and our scars in order to appear in control appear as perfect as possible, and appear unharmed by the brokenness all around. The world says, cover those warts, cover those wrinkles, those stretch marks, those melanoma scars. Don't talk about your cancer or your mental illness. Hide your childhood abuse. Forgive and forget quickly all the pain that you have suffered long ago. But these are just lies. Lies told by society to keep us from dealing with the deep inflicted wounds of our past. Wounds that often get suppressed and buried so deep that they begin to fester and spread like sickness. Sickness that never seems to leave the body but then ends up becoming a virus of the soul. After so long, you can no longer ignore that rotting decay, that stench of disregarded disease. It takes strength to acknowledge our wounds. And it takes a whole lot of courage to find ways to heal them. We must gaze into our painful sores and suffering 
in order to fully experience the healing power of God's grace and love. Jesus uses his own wounds to heal the world of fear and doubt. Jesus shows his hands marred and scarred by nails. I mean, Thomas touches his wounds and finds peace. Peace that heals all the fear he had been carrying. <laughs> I mean, yes, Thomas is afraid. Yes, we all know Thomas doubts. Thomas is, like all of us, trying to keep our faith on the outside without doing the hard soul work on the inside. Diving deep into the wounds of our soul is kind of like entering into the seven circles of hell. We have to journey down deep into the fiery pits of our past and peel back layer after layer of scar tissue. The older we get, the harder it is to experience healing from past wounds. Like the aging of the body, the elasticity of the spirit can tighten and even lose its agility and its ability to stretch towards grace. Jesus reminds his followers to have faith like children, for children heal and recover from pain and suffering pretty quickly. Our spirits should remain elastic bending and mending with the turbulence life throws our way. But this spiritual truth becomes harder to live by as we grow older. We become more stubborn as the years go on. Like our bones, our soul can become stale and brittle, breaking and aching at the smallest of afflictions. We would rather die in our pride than humbly stretch ourselves and find new life by means of old wounds. In the Gospel of John, Jesus reminds a Jewish man named Nicodemus of this ancient truth. One night, Nicodemus meets Jesus by the campfire and asks him, How can I receive eternal life? Jesus says, you must be born again. You must be willing to die in order to truly live. The born again imagery is what we practice by means of baptism. Falling beneath the surface of the water down into the depths of death in order to be resurrected, to be lifted up in new life with Jesus Christ. Nicodemus must have faith in order to experience this new life. But faith, faith is all about letting go. Faith is about the willingness to fall all the way down into the grave. Faith takes us down into the pits of despair and yet drawing our eyes upward towards salvation, towards God's saving grace found in the midst of death that seems to be washing over us. The bottom is where we can fully experience and discover the love of God that has no boundaries. Going all the way to the bottom of our lives is difficult and painful. The journey is portrayed in this book called The Shack, written by William Paul Young. The main character's name is Mac, and Mac must wander all the way down to the bottom of his own deep wounds. Mac was happily married with a beautiful family that he loved deeply. But one day, his precious little daughter, Missy goes missing. She's abducted and murdered in a shack in the woods. And it is in the middle of this father's grief where Mac receives a letter. 
It's from God, asking Mac to return to that same shack where his daughter was murdered. Mac has to find courage in the midst of his deep suffering to go down to that shack. But it is here where Mac encounters God. He interacts with a God who allows him to explore all of his anger and agony of losing his precious girl. In one scene, Mac stands in front of wisdom, the ultimate judge, the giver of grace and freedom. Mac confesses his hatred for the man who stole the life of his little girl. He wants justice for his pain and loss. He wants this man to suffer and die like he has done each and every day. And Mac ultimately wants to know why this kind of evil happens in the world. Why his innocent baby girl had to suffer and die. Why good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people and somehow bad people still receive mercy. And here is wisdom's response to Max pleading. She says, nobody knows what horrors I have saved the world from because people can't see what never happened. All evil flows from independence, and independence is your choice. If I were to simply revoke all the choices of independence, the world as you know it would cease to exist, and love would have no meaning. She goes on to say that this world is not a playground where I keep all my children free from evil. Evil is the chaos of this age that you brought to me but it will not have the final say. Now it touches everyone that I love, those who follow me and those who don't. If I take away the consequences of people's choices, I destroy the possibility of love. And she says, love that is forced is no love at all. Salvation is love, love available to all. Those whom we deem worthy and those who we don't think deserve it at all. Yes, our wounds will break our hearts and no one is exempt from this pain. But love, love has the ability to help our hearts break open rather than shattering into pieces. People with hardened hearts are controlled by their wounds that they desperately try to hide. They end up biting back at every moment of pain, often inflicting wounds onto others who get in their way. However, those who are willing to open their wounded selves to God and to others can experience the healing, the healing power of love and forgiveness. In his book, The Wounded Healer, Henry Nouwen writes this, Forgiveness is only real for those who have discovered the weakness of their friends and the sins of their enemies in their own hearts. Hmm. Forgiveness always turns the fingers we point outward back inward, back towards our wounded selves. For it is our wounds that make us all human. And we must remember that if the flesh of humanity was skin good enough for Jesus to wear, then it is still good enough for us. Remember the words of the ancient wise man. The wound is the place 
where the light enters you. Jesus is the wounded healer that shines light through the deep cuts and sores of our lives. The light of life to come can only penetrate our being through our wounds. The flesh of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man that was wounded in this world, who experienced rejection from his family, betrayal by his friends, abuse, whipping, beating, and ultimately lynching. This Jesus teaches us all how to be wounded healers, for it is in the wounds of Jesus that our own wounds become whole. It is through the love of Jesus Christ that each of us can become healers for the world. This week, I invite you to journey inward. Each day, I encourage you to find a quiet place in your home. Close your eyes, take several deep breaths, and let go. Let your soul reveal a wound you have been carrying and perhaps ignoring for a while. Sit with that wound. If tears come, let them fall. If anger rises, let it burn. But then take another breath. Let the light of grace and the love of God reveal a deeper truth to you. And then when you're ready, ask God, what are you inviting me to do with this wound? Perhaps you need to make a phone call to an old friend or family member. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness or confront an affliction against you. What better time than right now to look deep within ourselves and trust the wounded healer who taught us all how to be people of resurrection. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship at Mutual Park Baptist Church. It is good to have you joining us and uniting your spirits as one body in Christ. As you go, church, remember that we are an inclusive community of faith rooted in the love of Jesus Christ, growing, serving, and transforming lives. Amen.